Good day, everybody. Today we're going to be doing images and curved mirrors. Last week we looked at flat mirrors or planar mirrors. This week we're going to be looking at curved mirrors. We're going to learn what a concave and convex mirror is, how to do ray diagrams to get the images, and then once we get the images, we're going to describe those images using salt, the size, attitude, location, and type. Then we're going to explain some uses of curved mirrors. A convex mirror is also called a diverging mirror. It bulges outward, so the mirror is on this outside. The rays of light come in, and when they hit the mirror, they scatter or they diverge, moving away from each other. A concave mirror is known as a converging mirror. The mirror is on the inside of the C shape, and what happens is when the rays come in, they all reflect to a certain point known as the focal point, and so that's why they're called converging, because they all meet at one place. If you have a convex mirror, the mirror is on the outside of the mirror. And if you have a concave mirror, the reflective surface is on the inside of the mirror. We all know funhouse mirrors. We've gone to the fairs. And they're a combination of concave and convex mirrors. So depending on where you're standing, if you're hitting the concave mirror, it's going to make you look short. If you're at the convex, or sorry, at the convex mirror, you look short. If you're on the concave mirror, you look a little thinner and longer. And by playing with this, we can make our images look very, very strange. So here we have a typical funhouse mirror. The this part is curved this inside, so that's a concave mirror. This one's bulging outward, so it's a convex. And right here, it's concave, so it's bulging in. If we look at crayons in a convex mirror, the one that bulges out, they look a bit wider and shorter. Whereas if we look in the concave uh, mirror, the one that's the C shape, they look longer and thinner. So basically the convex mirror is curved or bulged outward and it makes your reflection look short and fat. Whereas a concave mirror, the mirror is curved or bulged inwards making you look tall and thin. What they do is they alter the way the light is reflected and your brain can't figure out what's going on as it usually does. So we see a drastically altered shape. Even if you look dead ahead, the light being reflected into your eyes is either slightly above or below your eye line. And then when you're moving, when you're moving back and forth, it further alters the image. The brain's trying to figure out what's going on, but it can't. So it just tells you what it sees. Now the terminology for this one, first is the center of curvature. This is basically, if you made the mirror into a big giant sphere, this would be the center of the sphere, and we label it as C. The principal axis is pretty much the normal. It's a line that goes through the center of the mirror, all the way through the center of curvature, and hits the surface of the mirror at 90 degrees, and it's labeled P. The vertex is where the principal axis meets the label, the mirror, and it's labeled as V. The focal point in a convex, a concave mirror is where all the rays are going to reflect and hit. So that's the focal point, and we label it as F. The focal length is in between the vertex and the focal point. So those are our key terms. Basically, the light is coming in from here. It's going to reflect into the focus. The center of curvature is 2F. And the mirror is a hard surface, the principal, and this little dot here is our vertex. This is a concave mirror. It can also be called a converging mirror. It is shaped like the arc of a circle curving away from objects in front of it. Parallel light rays reflect off the concave mirror and converge to a point in front of the mirror. Where these light rays focus is called the focal point and is labeled F. The distance between F and the mirror is called the focal length. The center of curvature of the mirror, labeled C, represents a point that is two focal lengths away from the mirror. Both F and C are located in front of the concave mirror. The straight line passing through C, F, and the mirror is called the principal axis. The point where the principal axis intersects the mirror is called the vertex of the mirror and is labeled V. There are three rules to follow when drawing light ray diagrams which help to show where an image would form. Rule number one, 
a light ray directed parallel to the principal axis reflects through the focal point F on the same side of the mirror. Rule number two, a light ray directed through the focal point F will reflect parallel to the principal axis. Rule number three, a light ray directed towards the center of the mirror, the vertex, will reflect at the same angle made with the principal axis. If drawn correctly, these three light rays will intersect at the same point, which is where the image forms. In this case, the image is located on the same side of the mirror, between F and C. It is inverted and smaller than the object. Because the light rays intersect at the same point, it produces a real image. This is a con All right, so that's basically the overview of the next part where we're going to learn how to locate images in a concave mirror. So they talked about the little rules. Now, a lot of this is a lot of wordy, wordy, wordy stuff. But when we actually get to showing you how to draw the diagrams, you're basically doing the same two lines every time. So here, the first rule is that if we go in from the object, parallel to the principal axis, so a straight line that's running parallel, kind of like a train track, it's going to reflect through F. Rule number two is if we go through the center of curvature, it's hitting the mirror at 90 degrees, so it's just going to reflect back on each other because the angle of incident, the angle of reflection is basically zero. Rule number three, if it's coming from the object and it goes in through the focal point, it'll reflect back parallel to the principal axis. And then rule number four, if it's coming in from the object and it hits the vertex, whatever the angle of incidence is, if this is 20, it will reflect back at 20 on the other side. Just like that's what we did with the flat mirrors last week, the exact same ray diagram. So this is it. In parallel goes through F. In through F reflects parallel. If it goes through C, it reflects back on itself. And this one, if it goes in through V, it reflects back at the same angle. So there are five basic possibilities for a concave mirror where we could place the object. We could place it behind the center of curvature between C and F, in front of F, at C, or at F. Now we always put it so that the bottom of the object's resting on the principal axis, so then the image is easy to find on the bottom. What you're going to do is you're going to pick a point at the top of the object, and you're going to drop one ray so it passes through the focal point, and then it's going to reflect parallel to B. The second ray you're going to draw so it's parallel to the principal axis, and it will reflect through F. You draw the arrows pointing toward the mirror so that you show that they're incident rays. Then you draw the reflect, uh, reflected rays using those two rules. So it's either going to go through the focal point or be parallel. And you draw the arrows away from the mirror to show that they're leaving. They're the reflected rays. So first rule goes in. Second rule goes from the top through F. When we reflect them, the one that's parallel goes through F. The one that went in through F reflects parallel. And then where they meet is where we're going to draw the image. So again, here the incident ray went in and it reflects back through F. This one went through F and reflects back parallel. So two lines that you have to draw every time, and where they intersect is where you draw your image. So this is how it looks if you're doing. The good news is you don't really need a protractor in this part. The first case is when the object is beyond C and F. So there's your center of curvature, there's your focal point, and there is your object. I made a little funny man. So now you're going to draw the first one. It's going to go straight into the mirror. This is my incident ray and it is now going to reflect back through the focal point. So that's the first one you're going to draw every time. The next one you're going to draw from the top of the object straight through the focal
So that's the incident ray there. And now it's going to reflect back parallel to the principal axis. That's that line there. So that's your reflected ray there. Here is the image. So how do we describe the image? Well, when we look here, so here we're just finishing up. The, uh, this is where the top of the image is. And we draw the image there. So we can see here is the object. Here is the image. This is the object. Image is smaller. It's upside down. So we say it's inverted. Where is it located? It's in between C and F. And it's a real image because it's located on the same side of the mirror as the object. So reduced in size, inverted, between C and F, and it's a real image. In case B, we're going to place the object in between C and F. <clears throat> so the focal point is always here. The center of curvature is 2F. So if this is 5, this is 5. What we're going to do is those same two lines, the first one is going to go in parallel to the principal axis and reflect back through F. The second line is going to go through F and reflect parallel to the principal axis. And then we draw the image. So when we do that, one line goes into the mirror, reflects back through F. The second one goes through F and reflects back parallel. And when we draw the image, well, what do we get? It's larger, it's upside down, so it's inverted. It's past C, so it's outside C. And again, it's real because it's on the same side of the mirror. So reflect straight through F, from the top through F and back parallel, and you get your image. And this is how it looks if you're drawing it. In the second case, case B, the object is between C and F. Our first incident ray is going to go parallel to the principal axis and hit the mirror. And then it will reflect back through F. Our second ray will go th from the top of the object through, straight through F to hit the mirror. And when it reflects back, it reflects parallel to the principal axis. I'll extend this one out. Where they meet is our image. In KC, the object is placed in front of F. This is the most difficult one because it's hard to get that second line to go through F, so you have to do a little tricky part. So the first ray goes into the mirror and reflects back through F. That's okay. But to go from the top of the mirror through F, it won't hit the mirror. So we have to kind of line up our ruler like it's going to go through F. So it points at the mirror and it's going to go into the mirror and reflect parallel. But because it's not actually going through F, we have to extend our reflected lines, dot, 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 into the mirror, reflect this reflected line, dot, 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 into the mirror. And we get what's called a virtual image because it's inside the mirror. It is not on the same side as the object. So the first line, First line here goes in, reflects through F. This one, we line it up like it was going to go through F. It hits the mirror and reflects parallel, and then we extend the reflected rays out. So this part is the extension of the reflected rays. OK, so when it's in front of F, we do the same thing. The incident ray goes straight in, and then it reflects back through F. 
The next one though is a little bit more difficult because we cannot go straight through F. So it's kind of a virtual F. We dot the line down to F and extend it straight out to the mirror and then it reflects parallel. Now, if we extend those lines, this one goes and then this one extends straight out this way and our image is here. Now, it's on this side of the mirror, so it is virtual. So this one is bigger in size and it's upright, it's not upside down. It is behind the mirror and because it's behind the mirror, it is called virtual. In KC, the object is placed in front of F. So there's your focal point. Any, if it's in between the mirror and F, it's going to be a virtual image. It will be larger, it will be upright, and it will be behind the mirror. In case D, if we're placing it at C, we do the same two lines. One line goes parallel, that's our incident right here, it reflects back through F. This line here goes through F and reflects parallel. Where they meet is our image, and the image is exactly at C. So it will be the same size, but upside down, inverted. It will be located at the same place at C, and it's real because it's on the same side as the mirror. So in, reflect back through F, in through F, reflect back parallel, and we get the image. In case E, if the object is placed at F, when the parallel, when the incident ray comes in and reflects back through F, and we can't actually draw a line straight through F because it wouldn't hit the mirror. So we're going to do that one that's like the plane mirrors. The incident ray comes in, whatever this angle of incidence is, we make the same angle of incidence and we draw that out. These lines are now parallel. And because they're parallel, they never hit. And because they never hit, there's no image. So if the object is placed at F, no image is formed. We won't see anything in the mirror. It's like it disappeared. So this is the summary of the base, basic properties. Now, it's not like you have to memorize it, but does kind of help you remember if you want to check if you're on the right track, if you're beyond C, you should be seeing a smaller upside down image that's between C and F and it's real. If the object is at C, you should see a same size object that's upside down, inverted, at C, and it's also real. If you place it between C and F, you'll get a bigger image, an upside down image. It will be located beyond C and it's still real. If we put the object at F, you won't get an image. And inside F, you're going to get a larger, upright, behind the mirror, virtual image. Now, when you're drawing the images, you'll have the image and you'll, you should be able to describe what its size, altitude, location, and type are. What do we use real life converging or concave lenses for? Well, a lot of times they're used to reflect a light from the focus outwards. So things like searchlights, flashlights, car headlights, they will use a concave lens to reflect that light back out to a focal point that's down the road. So you get a nice beam flashing out. A satellite dish that uses um, this little part here is basically the focal point. So when the beams are coming in, they reflect back, all converge to this one point, which gets a really strong um, signal from the satellite, and then it goes down into your house and you get to watch TV. The radar antenna here is also a concave mirror. So again, where this part here is, is the focal length. So all the beams of radio waves are hitting the concave mirror and striking that focal point to get a very, very strong signal. The next one are our convex mirrors. You've all probably seen convex mirrors, the corner stores like um, Max Melt, but I can't remember what it's called now and stuff. They have these in the back of the store to be able to see if anyone's shoplifting. Um, your rear of your mirror, objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. Those are convex mirror. They bulge outwards. The parts of a convex mirror and the imaging rules are pretty much what we did in the concave. The difference is that 
the F, the focal point, is now called a virtual focus, and the center of curvature are behind the mirror. Because it's bulging outward, those center of curvature and focal point are inside the mirror on the other side. And light will come from outside the mirror, and when it hits, it has to go through F or C, which we did before, and so we're always going to get what's called a virtual image in this case. So convex mirrors are called diverging because whenever the light hits, they're never going to meet at one point. They're going to spread out. And because of this, they're never, ever going to hit. And so we don't get an image, a real image, on the same side of the mirror. So we only get virtual images. They're always smaller and up, more upright compared to the original object. So here's a diverging. The, Light is going to come in here, and when it bounces off and reflects, it's never going to meet. They're always going to be parallel. So we will get the image over on this side. This is a convex mirror. It can also be called a diverging mirror. It is shaped like the arc of a circle curving towards an object in front of it. Parallel light rays reflect off the convex mirror and diverge away from a point behind the mirror. Where the extended virtual light rays appear to focus is called the focal point and is labeled F. The distance between F and the mirror is called the focal length. The center of curvature of the mirror, labeled C, represents a point that is two focal lengths away from the mirror. Both F and C are located behind the convex mirror. The straight line passing through C, F, and the mirror is called the principal axis. The point where the principal axis intersects the mirror is called the vertex of the mirror and is labeled V. There are three rules to follow when drawing light ray diagrams which help to show where an image would form. Rule number one, a light ray directed parallel to the principal axis reflects off the mirror away from the focal point F of the mirror. Rule number two, a light ray directed towards the focal point F on the other side of the mirror will reflect parallel to the principal axis. Rule number three, a light ray directed towards the vertex V of the mirror will reflect at the same angle made with the principal axis. If drawn correctly, these three reflected light rays will not intersect, so virtual rays must be extended behind the mirror. The virtual light rays, drawn as dotted lines, intersect at a point behind the mirror, which is where the image would form. In this case, the image is located on the other side of the mirror between F and the mirror. It is upright and smaller than the object. Because the virtual light rays intersect at the same point, it produces a virtual image. So again, as light rays come in, when they reflect out, they never meet. So what we would do is we would extend those rays into the mirror and where they meet is where the image is being formed. So any incident ray traveling parallel on the way to the mirror will reflect in a manner that its extension goes through the focal point. So as it goes in parallel, it's like you line up your ruler as if it was going to go through F. On this side, it's a reflected ray, but then we go dotted line back down to F. The second rule is that any incident ray coming towards the mirror as if it was going to go through F will reflect parallel. So then we extend this line out this way. And anything that is aimed at the center of curvature is reflected back on itself. So again, if it goes parallel, you line it up with F to get the reflected ray and then if it's coming straight in as if it was going to go through the center of curvature, it just reflects back on itself. And if it was going in like it was going to hit F, it reflects parallel. So we do the same thing. We're going to pick a point at the top. The first one we're going to draw so it goes towards the focal point, and then it's going to reflect parallel. Second ray is going to go parallel to the principal axis and then go through F. Draw your arrowheads in. Then you're going to draw your reflected rays. Put arrowheads to indicate they're moving away from the mirror. And then you extend the reflected rays. This is important. The reflected rays get ref extended into the mirror. So this is what it looks like. 
Our final example, we're going to do the same lines again, straight in, parallel, and then that's going to go down to the focal point. The reflected ray extends from the focal point back out. Our next line, we have to line up like it's going to go through the focal point from the top of the image. It's going to hit the mirror, and that one is going to reflect parallel. And then you extend it into the mirror. And there's our image. So this image is smaller than the original, upright, located behind the mirror, and because it's behind the mirror, it is what we call a virtual image. So again, first ray comes in, and when it reflects out, it's lined up with the focal point. The second one is going in, so it would extend to the focal point, reflects parallel, and when we take that reflected ray and extend it, where they meet is a virtual image, smaller, behind the mirror, upright, and it's virtual. What do we use these for? Basically security mirrors, rear view mirrors are our major um, uses. And whenever you look at them, the images always look smaller than they appear. So you learned what a concave mirror is. We learned what a convex mirror is. We learned how to do our di ray diagrams. And we should have learned about our salt how the size, attitude, um, location, and type of image we get. And now we have our uses. Have a great day doing the assignments. I miss you guys lots, and I hope you're taking care.